Thanks for clicking. My name is Mark Mitchell. I'm a mortgage broker here in London, Ontario. Stats Canada released the November's inflation data today, revealing that Canada's inflation rate continued to cook. For its part, the Bank of Canada predicted that we would be hitting 5% inflation by the end of the year, with many others predicting that we should be seeing higher interest rates to tamp down that inflation early to mid-2022. With those interest rate hikes in mind, what I want to do today is go over the inflation rate just released by StatsCan, go over the last time that inflation was this high and what the interest rates were at that time, and then do a brief discussion as to why the Bank of Canada might be dragging its heels on raising interest rates. We do have our weekly update on the Chinese real estate crisis, which is continuing to get worse. Uh, we'll have that out on Friday. And also we have our year in review for the Canadian real estate market coming out on Sunday. So make sure you click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into this inflation data. StatsCan revealed that the November inflation rate came in at 4.7%, less than the 5% predicted by many economists, and the exact same amount that it was in November. So, while 4.7% is definitely not something to celebrate, we can be happy that it didn't hit 5%. That's definitely a sign of the times that we're really just celebrating that it didn't get worse. So while there's no big the sky is falling news, I think the 4.7% inflation combined with the Bank of Canada kind of letting us know that they won't be raising rates anytime soon in early in the new year really demonstrates the amount of debt currently held by Canadians. The last time the inflation rate was this high was in 2003 and the prime rate set by the Bank of Canada at that time, the lowest prime rate in 2003 was 4.5%. Right now the prime rate is 2.45%, so when we had a similar inflation rate last time, the Bank of Canada's prime rate was 2.05% higher than it is now. They raise rates when inflation gets hot in order to cool it down. Uh, by decreasing the money supply, inflation is supposed to, supposed to decrease, it's supposed to cool down the economy a little bit. So why is the Bank of Canada dragging its heels this time? Why has it not started to raise rates? Well, the official story being given is Omicron and that uncertainty over the future and over the, the need for monetary support from the Bank of Canada uh, means that it has to keep rates low in order to keep the economy going. Um, and it, indeed, yes, if, the, if we are heading back to lockdown, if we are heading back to kind of those mid-COVID days, um, I suppose one day we'll find out how we're going to classify each stage. But in those initial waves, when, when everything was locked down, the bank had to keep rates low in order to stimulate the economy, and they very well might have to continue to do so. But I do think there's something more than Omicron going on here. As we mentioned on this channel before, the use of home equity lines of credit has skyrocketed throughout the pandemic. And as home equity lines of credit are variable, the payments on them rise when that prime rate rises. We don't have any official data on what the average balance of the Canadians' home lines of credit is, but if we look at a 2018 article in the Globe and Mail, we saw that the average balance was 65000 There's also been reports out by Equifax saying that usage of home equity lines of credit has risen by over 56% in Canada throughout the pandemic. So the real worry is that if prime rates go up to that 4.5% that they were at in 2003, that it could make payments very unmanageable for, for all these holders of these home, equities, home equity lines of credit. How much? So the average home line was 65K, $65,000, and we know it's risen by about 56%, but just for ease of sake, and I don't want to make this sound worse than it is, let's use 80K for an example. If we use Meridian's Prime Plus 0.5 product, um, and this isn't an ad, this is, a, I don't work with Meridian, but if we, but it is a good barometer for the average line of credit in Canada. So if we use their Prime Plus 0.5 um, home equity line of credit product, so that would put a rate at 2.95, and we look at interest only payments on an 80k line of credit we would be seeing the average monthly payment of 196 dollars now let's bump that up to the 4.5 percent that was the prime rate in 2003 um, so prime at 4.5 add their 0.5 puts an interest rate of five percent that would bump the monthly mortgage payments up to 333 dollars that's just interest only and that's about 140 dollars more than than currently being paid on that average on that average um, home line of credit. 
that $140 a month is a lot of money to a lot of people. And the real worry, I think, with the Bank of Canada and uh, with their refusal to start raising rates is that people won't be able to afford those payments and will end up seeing the market flooded with properties and our prices go down. Go ahead. Fair enough. But I don't just mean go down, I mean go down substantially, like we're talking 2008 type type crash, where we have a bank problem as the, the, the real estate market just crashes. That escalated quickly. And that's just looking at home equity lines of credit, adding that 100 extra $150, $140 to the, your monthly payments. The variable rate mortgages also skyrocketed throughout the pandemic, with usage of variable rate mortgages over that of fixed hitting over 50% for the first time in five years so all of those mortgages and those aren't just eighty thousand dollar mortgages those are five six seven eight hundred thousand dollar mortgages going up by over two percent so you can see the the monthly mortgage payments could go through the roof if rates go back to that 2003 level now no one is saying that the Bank of Canada is going to is going to instantly raise rates to the to that two percent level to that four and a half percent level right away. They'll do it in incremental steps. They'll do it in baby steps, 0.25 here, 0.25 there, unless they unless they have to raise rates. But that's another discussion for another time. But we can see like it very quickly rates can get out of hand very quickly rates can bump up to that four and a half percent level which would leave a lot of people overburdened with a lot of debt and i think that is really the driving force for the bank of canada to in dragging their heels and kicking that can down the road and trying to wait as long as possible as long as they can before they raise rates their mandate is to keep inflation around two percent so while we see that 4.7 percent isn't five that's great but it's still well above the bank of canada's mandate and well above the inflation rate that canadians have come to expect over the past 18 years so while yes i think omicron definitely is a concern and perhaps the bank doesn't want to move too fast only to have to in raising rates only to have to pull them back again I think that the overall debt loads of Canadians and the overall debt load of the government, which we haven't even talked about, I think that is weighing very heavy on the minds of the Bank of Canada, and that's why we're not seeing rates rise just yet. With that said, the Bank of Canada did say that they're expecting to hit 5% inflation by the end of the year, so we still have to get December's data out, which should be out uh, mid-January, and then we'll really have a full picture of what 2021 did look like, and we'll give us a much better picture of what, we'll, what we're going to see going forward well into 2022. Um, the Federal Reserve is set to meet today to discuss their monetary their monetary um, tightening. And I think they're gonna be pulling back their easy money. And uh, as the, uh, the US inflation rate has hit 6.8%, which is massive, that's huge. That's, that's far beyond anything we've seen in 30, 40 years. And under normal conditions, Canada isn't that far behind the US in terms of our, of our growth, of our inflation growth, and uh, of our monetary policy for that matter. So, Time will tell um, where we're going to go with rates and where we're going to go with inflation. And make sure you click like and subscribe if you do want to get those updates. And thanks for, so much for watching.